How many people drink water Good question. nowadays? So many, you see a lot of people drinking all kinds of things, like coffee, tea, mm -hmm. sodas. All of them are dehydrated. Sport drinks, yeah. Sport drinks. Mm -hmm. anything that has sugar in it will dehydrate because it is a contaminant. The body is trying to defend itself. It's an acid. The, the body will defend itself. You know, a coffee, a coffee, mm -hmm. your caffeine, for example, is a nerve toxin. So nerve toxins require water to transport it out of the system. So for every cup of coffee, your body will have to give up about three cups of water. Where is the water coming from? The it's still from the cells. So then you're putting in all, all that water into the blood so that it can take out the caffeine mm -hmm. and then the cells become dehydrated. Okay. You don't realize that and you drink more coffee because you're thirsty or drink another Coke or something yes. that has caffeine in or a sports drink mm -hmm. or the, the new drinks that have four times more caffeine than even Coke has in it and people get stimulated. Whatever stimulates you dehydrates you. Around 2015, an image of Kali was shown on the Empire State Building. Kali is the goddess of death. The movie Watchmen had a scene in the movie where Dr. Manhattan's talent or energy was reproduced where a nuclear exp type explosion blew up New York. Dark Knight Rises, where they brought an atomic bomb within city limits, shut off the bridges for anybody escaping, but Batman dumped the bomb into the ocean. Look at the buildings in the background. Gotham is basically New York City. Did you see everything is burning as if it was attacked by a nuclear bomb? The Batman, same thing. Look at the background, the city's in flames. Gotham is like, again, I said, like New York City. This time, you saw a flood during the presidential election of a specific candidate. Super Mario Brothers, the movie that just came out. Watch the movie with your kids. Take note of the flood that happens in Brooklyn. And at the end of the movie, you see Bullet Bill being launched, a gigantic Bullet Bill at that, being launched into the tunnel, and they end the scene in New York City. Mm. They're predictive programming that something's going to happen in New York City, just like they predicted programmed 9-11. You won't believe what the hospitals are doing with black women's placentas. Did you know that all over the world, black mothers are being exploited in hospitals for the rich and the wealthy? There are rich people who need new hearts and organs and are using technology to generate them by using high quality blood tissues and melanin. And where do you think they getting this blood tissue and melanin from? From black women in hospitals after they had babies. When they have you signing these papers in the hospital, you are actually giving them the right to become a trustee and take your placenta, umbilical wow. cord, and cord blood. Then they sell them to companies like Life Bank USA and Cell Gene. Life Bank USA buys all the blood, the cords, and the placentas. Cell Gene takes the melanin and blood from those and give them to a chemist to clone it and create new organs. So while women out here struggling to make ends meet on welfare, section eight, and things of that nature, these Fortune 500 companies are banking off them and making billions. Sometimes we do 10 episodes for my show and in this last season, um, I was hitting a block, right? I, I was like, oh, I'm not doing it right, right? So I went in the corner and then I was looking at the wall and I was like, come on devil, come on devil, right? Get, come to me, like come to me. Cause I had to do something like crazy, right? Had nightmares for a month. So it does come to it or after? after. After. Like I had nightmares every day. Like I just felt, I felt that energy, oh, interesting. you know, and I had to pray and do all this stuff to like get rid of it. And you know, you call your mom up and you're like, bring me back to life. And <laughs> that stuff is real. I don't give a about none of the religions. Ain't none of them worth shit. Okay. Now let me prove it to you. The only thing religion has ever done successfully is divide people. Ooh. Don't take my word. Look at it yourself if you can tell yourself the truth. Okay? Religion divides people. There ain't but one God. And can't none of these religious <laughs> alone. Pay attention, God. That's why you got all these different <laughs> churches. Now, let me quote scripture, since that's all. Folks say, why you scripture since you don't believe in religion? I said, because the only thing my people think they know. <laughs> okay? Think about this. Okay? If God is our Father, okay? Scripture says I must be about my father's business. As I look through this world, because scripture says I must be about my father's business. As I look through this world, I see Satan's children working full time plus for their daddy. Mm. We, the we, we the children of the most high. Greatest hoaxes in human history. But first, a short explanation of what we're dealing with. Paleontology, the study of the origin and development of life. Paleontology is the study of life's formation and development. The paleontological scientific approach is explained on Wikipedia as follows. Quote, 
When attempting to explain earlier phenomena, paleontologists and other scientists of history construct a set of hypotheses addressing the causes and then look for a smoking gun, a piece of evidence that indicates that one hypothesis is a better explanation than others. Sometimes the smoking gun is discovered by happy coincidence during another investigation. This explanation is entirely consistent with the way paleontology works in practice, but it should be obvious to anyone capable of critical thinking that the paleontological establishment can control which hypotheses will be constructed. A short practical example. A random dental bone is found at an excavation site, and from this dental bone, the rest of the skeleton is guessed at. We are not kidding about this. The entire dinosaurian hmm. field of the paleontological program is a sham. It was the English paleontologist Richard Owen who in 1842 coined the term dinosaur. The phenomenon was then gradually promoted in the mainstream press all over the world, which told of these dinosaur creatures. In 1854, a few years after the word dinosaur was invented and the concept presented in popular articles in the biggest American newspapers, the first dinosaur was discovered in North America by fossil hunter Ferdinand van de Veer Hayden. Most people believe that dinosaur skeletons displayed in museums consist of real dinosaur bones. This is not the case. The real bones are incarcerated in thick vaults to which only a few select high... We're seeing a society that not only has a lot more people of lower IQ, but a lot fewer people of higher IQ. In other words, a dumbing down, a chemical dumbing down of society. So everyone's sort of mediocre. That leaves them dependent on government because they can't excel. We have these people of lower IQ who are totally dependent. Then we have this mass of people who are going to believe anything they're told because they can't really think clearly. And very few people of very high IQ who have good cognitive function who can figure this all out. And that's what they want. So, you know, you can kind of piece it together as to why they are so insistent in spending so many hundreds of millions of dollars of propaganda money mm. to dumb down society. I would say that nothing in this world works the way you think it does. Nothing. Governments do not operate the way you think they do. Banks do not do what you think they do. The police department is not here for what you think it is. Nothing in your world works the way you think it does. There's a far higher, bigger picture going on on the earth for at least 7,000 years of human history that we modern day people really just don't relate to. All we know is what we live with today. Never suspecting that the institutions of power, banking, education, the military industrial complex of the world has taken hundreds of years to develop. I'm trying to say, as you know, if, if you want to talk to somebody well informed about diet, don't ask a doctor. They know plenty about drugs and procedures. They know next to nothing about diet and nutrition. You were, uh, as a cardiologist, what was your training in nutrition? Uh, virtually nothing. Lots of interest, but the formal training was could be measured in minutes. Uh, so uh, that's a sad reflection of the focus of, of conventional health care. That there's plenty of time spent on pharmacology and procedures and acute uh, catastrophic care. There's virtually nothing told uh, taught about uh, nutrition and, you don't and say. sadly often formal nutrition is so colored by industry and their agenda that maybe it's good that uh, physicians are not educated in, in uh, nutrition because it would be sad sadly colored by industry the Rothschilds come from the Orsini family Roth means red in German and the Orsini means red red bear little red bears that's what Orsini means the gray Pope is Pepe Orsini he trumps the black he trumps the white pope. the gray Pope is gray even pope. higher than the black and the white pope the orsini is the f the maxima family they are the maximum family they are on top and somehow the Farina and the farnese which i know without any doubt through all my studies that they are the three most powerful illuminati what, what about rothschild and rockefeller well they are orsini they just changed their name rockefeller oh. were rothschilds rothschilds were orsini orsini were a family which have their lines in Babylon and Egypt. They tell you that. You read their biographies, they'll tell you that. We go back to Nimrod, they tell you that. The Rothschilds say that. We go back to Nimrod. How? Through the Orsini. So Rockefeller, Rothschild, Orsini, and then you go back to the Persian and Egyptian dynasties. Never educate a person you're going to dominate. That's a no-no. You train them. So we're trained to hold jobs. 
We're trained to be taught a certain way. We're not trained so that you can begin to create. And yet, blacks create everything you can think of. You go back through the list of inventions by black, almost everything you find out there was invented by a black person. I think that we got so caught up in school being a tradition that we stopped using it as a learning tool, which it should be. Like, up to this day, I mean, school should be, I think there should be a different curriculum in each and every, like, neighborhood, you know? Because I'm going to Tam, Tamapai High, and I'm learning about the basics, but they're not basic for me, you know? And it's like, they're, they're not, to, to get us ready for today's world, they're not, that's not helping. It's just what they took, so it's what we're gonna take, you know? And that's why the streets have taught me. And, um, but school is really important, reading, writing, arithmetic. But I think after you learn reading, writing, and arithmetic, that's it. But what they tend to do is teach you reading, writing, and arithmetic, then teach you reading, writing, and arithmetic again, then again, then again, just making it harder and harder, just so to keep you busy. And I, that's where I think they messed up. There should be a class on drugs. It should be a class on sex education, a real sex education class, not just pictures and diaphragms and unlogical terms and things like that. There should be a drug class. There should be sex education. There should be a class on scams. There should be a class on religious cults. There should be a, a class on police brutality. There should be a class on apartheid. There should be a class on racism in America. There should be a class on why people are hungry, but they're not. Their class is on gym. <laughs> Something don't matter. Physical education. Let's learn volleyball. Because one day we're going to, you know, it's, it's their class is like algebra. We have yet to go to a store and said, um, can I have X, Y plus two and <laughs> give me my Y change back, baby. You know, I, I, can, I think you could let me out. I've lived I've lived alone by myself. And the things that, that, I, that helped me were the things that I learned from my mother and from the streets. And reading has helped me. I mean, school has taught me reading, which is I love reading, writing, and arithmetic. It was yeah. so smart. Like foreign languages. I think they're important, but I don't think it should be required. Because it, actually they should be teaching you English and then teaching you how to understand double talk, politicians double talk, not teaching you how to understand French and Spanish and German. When am I going to Germany? <laughs> I can't afford to pay my rent in America. How am I going to Germany? You know, this is the I, this is this is what I mean by the basics are not the basics for me. And I think that it should be like college. You can go and take the classes that you want. And I think that like elementary school should be that way, where you where they give you the classes you should take for the basics, and then junior high school and high school should be the classes that you need mm. in order to to choose your path. Ancient civilizations have survived without um, going to schools like this. I mean. They've learned from the past. It's, it's, we're not being taught to deal with the world as it is. We're being taught to deal with this fairyland, which mm. we're not even living in anymore. Uh, and it's, it's, it's sad, because I'm telling you, and it's, it should not be me telling you. It should be common knowledge. Aren't they wondering why um, death rates are going up and suicide is going up and drug abuse? Aren't they wondering? Don't they understand that more people are I mean. More kids are being handed crack than they're being handed diplomas. Sad. I mean, it shouldn't, I mean, like, okay, in school we're learning to analyze. And then, well, I learned it now. They should relearn it. I think adults should go through school again. You know, I think that, I think that rich people should live like poor people and poor people should live like rich people. And it should change every week. And we'll have the best rounded people. We'll be able to deal with people. I mean, and I mean, everywhere. He going Look somewhere with that civilizations. Look how we grew, you know. And I think we need to learn from our mistakes and stop just going through emotions, which we're doing now. It's like we're waiting for some big button to be pushed or something like that.